look at the investment these companies are making in our area. Yeah. They're not Good just point. making this overnight investment and then going to pull out in two years. Right. They've done their homework. They're going to continue to improve technology and they're going to be here for a while. Yeah. From Ray and Associates Studios, this is Unsuitable, a management and financial services podcast for entrepreneurs, tenured business leaders, and others who are ready to look beyond the suit and tie culture for meaningful, measurable results. I'm Doug Hauser. Oil and gas activity in the Utica and Marcellus shale formations continues to generate a lot of buzz. And if you are a landowner in these particular regions, chances are good that you've already been sought after for your mineral rights. On today's show, Scott Moyer, a principal in Ray's Zanesville office and founder of the Four Pillars Strategy for Landowners, tells us what's going on in the oil and gas space these days. He's going to tell us more about the wealth management and asset protection options available to landowners in the Utica and Marcella Shale regions. Welcome, Scott. Thanks, Doug. I'm happy to be here. Good to have you here. So, uh, Four Pillars, what, what, what does that mean? It sounds like the the building blocks of the Browns over the last 15 years. That, that scares me a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully it's a little more successful than that's been. They've needed more pillars, so yes. <laughs> so the four pillars uh, that, that we're referring to today in, in the oil and gas industry uh, is income taxes, asset protection, transfer of wealth, and royalty auditing. All kind of play off each other um, and all have to do with, like you hit on, the horizontal drilling going on in southeastern Ohio, eastern or western PA, and uh, northeastern West Virginia. There's a lot of things going on over there. A lot of people have uh, come into some wealth in the oil and gas uh, field, and uh, they they need our guidance. And, and that is uh, that has been the case since 2010. Okay. Um, so are, are folks being taken advantage of? Is that is that what what's the the genesis behind the four pillars here? Are we trying to just provide obviously additional guidance. At first, when when I was first introduced to this area uh, by Merrill Lynch, the Moyer Group, they were doing seminars down in this area. Um, we we were seeing landmen uh, who represent um, oil and gas companies um, leasing folks uh, on these rights, the Marcellus and the Utica rights, um, for pennies on the dollar, considerably lower than what folks are commanding today. So we recognized, okay, are these folks going to need us just to do income tax compliance, simple 1040 filing? What can we do to help these folks, not only with their income tax compliance, because this revenue is interesting and it is unique, um, but from there, from the income tax compliance, how can we help them protect this asset, th- sure. this golden goose that lays the golden egg? Right. How do we help them transfer their wealth to the next generation, potentially while they're living or unfortunately when they pass away? And then last but not least, with royalty auditing, how do we make sure they're being paid correctly? Okay. Um, because, you know, when they, when they start getting royalties... Um, the checks look like Egyptian hieroglyphics. They're very hard to read. I'm sure that's on purpose by the you know those that are paying the royalties to try to make it more complex for them to to understand. Yes, it's a it's a complex industry. Um, you know, there there's three different products that are being produced uh, in most cases, and so it, it is tough to, for these companies to display it. You know, mm-hmm. in a simplified okay. manner. So um, it, it's it's difficult to understand. Sure. So, so part of it is we want to obviously protect the, the assets of those that, that have this opportunity. They're a part of our community that we serve and, and the footprint we serve, and we want to see them you know, adequately taken care of and, and have good representation. So mm-hmm. how about on the other side, though, if, I, if I'm one of those that's you know, involved in extracting or, or doing that, I mean, how does this, how does this play into... To, to their side? Do they appreciate the fact now that they've got a more sophisticated party on the other side represented by us? Um, I don't really have a ton of interaction with them. A lot of the, the, the companies, the horizontal drilling companies, are um, their industry, they're publicly traded companies. They're, mm-hmm. they're very, very large companies. And I think they would appreciate the, the, the consulting that we are doing for these, for these landowners. Okay. 
So when, when you talk about the four pillars and, and you explain that to uh, folks who have an opportunity uh, in the oil and gas space, what, how, do you, how do you lay that out for them uh, beyond what you, you talked about already, but to sort of explain, okay, this is the, the start, but where do we, the, the journey is really the important part. Is that, is that fair yeah. to say? Yeah, and the pillars are, are very easy to work through uh, with the landowners. Um, you know, we start with pillar number one, income taxes. Um, these folks um, are going to have an opportunity. If they already haven't, um, they're going to get a lease bonus. So when they sign a lease with an oil and gas company, they're going to get paid a sum of money multiplied by their ownership acreage. Okay. okay. And that's going to get taxed. All right. And so what we do with that is we make sure that we prepare for that. We, we, we do year end planning for them. Okay. Um, you know, the new tax law has has changed some of our methodology in, in planning, um, but w- there are still mechanisms to save income taxes if you get paid a lump sum lease bonus up front. Okay. The other um, is pipeline easements. Um, there was a wave um, about two to three years ago of pipeline easements going across people's properties. Folks would come to the door and they would knock on the landowner's door and they would state that, you know, hey, you want a lot of this classified as damages because those aren't taxable. Well, that's incorrect. Oh, okay. And they were led astray on that. So we coach these folks that if they're approached with a pipeline easement, they need they need to get us involved and they need to get an attorney involved, an experienced oil and gas attorney, to make sure that they structure that contract properly. And then the income tax compliance on pipeline easements, it's it's tough. I mean, it's complex. It's complex. Okay. And, and the third and final bucket is uh, is just just the royalty payment. That's when production okay. starts. Drilling has occurred, fracking has occurred. And the well is in production, and the folks who own the ground and they lease the ground, uh, the mineral rights, excuse me, um, they start to get paid a royalty. Okay. And, and it's based on a percentage of the production. Okay. So we you you try to sit down and help them sort of plan ahead and mm-hmm. say, okay, here's here's how we're going to deal with this, and and uh, you know help balance out cash considerations, as mm-hmm. you said, wealth planning transfer of wealth, all those types of things. Yeah, because a lot of people, they'll, they'll rush to to pay their income taxes right away on the money, or you know they'll think that if they build a barn or they buy a tractor that they ne- didn't necessarily need, they think it's a dollar-for-dollar dollar tax savings, mm-hmm. and, and I kind of de- debunk those myths. That's really the income tax pillar. Um, the other two pillars really play off each other, uh, and then, of course, we have the fourth pillar, royalty auditing, but the middle two pillars... Um, asset protection and transfer of wealth, that has to do with really what you're talking about, Doug. And that's, okay. that's the family approach. You know, this asset is, is very important to the family. Maybe it wasn't 25 years ago. Maybe they sure. didn't know, but it is now. So asset protection, we're working with our oil and gas attorney um, to structure family LLCs, limited mm-hmm. liability companies. We're, we're breaking out the mineral rights from the surface, and we're deeding them over to the mineral rights LLCs. Interesting. Okay. okay. And husband and wife usually own 50% out of the gate. It's taxed as a partnership. We think that protects that asset from a, from a legal liability okay. perspective. Really segregates it from, from everything else, basically. Correct. You know, God forbid something occurred on the farmland um, and the folks were sued for the lawyer that we work with. We think that segregating the minerals out of your personal name uh, further protects you. Okay. Um, and then from there, inside that family LLC, it's fairly easy to transfer wealth or gift units of that LLC instead of having to chop up mineral rights okay. at the courthouse. They're all housed underneath one LLC with, let's just say, a thousand units of ownership. The transfer of wealth pillar allows the family to gift those units to children or okay. grandchildren. Uh, while they live, or they can spell it out in their will or a state plan to go to the children when they pass. That's awesome. I mean, so much, a much more comprehensive thought process than just sort of, hey, I've, I've you know, found this, this asset all of a sudden or discovered this asset is worth something, and now what do I do? Correct. And, you know, where it really comes into play is over time in these areas, people have purchase farmland that maybe is, is not contiguous. Mm. Okay, okay. So we have, we have minerals over here, we have minerals over there. And, um, you know, the LLC, 
there's title search done by the attorney and, and it's pulled all together. Sure. And then that way it's paid underneath one roof, the LLC roof, mm-hmm. and it's it's easy to account for. That's fantastic. So it's 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 a great strategy. Yep. Um, what what are some of the the risks you're seeing kind of on a a macro level in, in the industry? I mean, you know, you see the fluctuation in, in oil and gas prices and how do you how do you factor in Obviously, nobody can predict the, the market 10 years from now, but how do you factor in some of these macro issues for, for folks? When, when gifting occurs and, and children are brought in or just evaluation of minerals is done by a petroleum engineer um, colleague of ours, um, we are able to see 30 years into the future on th- what the reserves could produce. Wow. Um, it's, 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 very, it's a great report. Um, I highly recommend it. But it's interesting. You bring up a great point. A lot of people focus on the price per barrel of oil, and it is very important. Mm-hmm. You know, it it controls economics sometimes. But what we're dealing with with these formations is more dry gas and a combination of wet gas. Okay. Where the wet gas it, it is called condensate. Okay, and they are stripping out um, the hydrocarbons. Um, and they're sending them to a plant that eventually those items are made into plastics. So everybody monitors the price per barrel of oil all the time, all the time. But I continue to, to, to school these folks that they need to follow the price per MCF of natural gas, okay. because that, that is the main thing that's being produced from these formations. Now, I've, I've read some, some stuff too, that there's uh, it, particularly in the, the Appalachian region, there's capacity constraint with midstream production. So there, there's facilities uh, under construction or in planning stages. Will that help production in, in your in your view? Definitely. Um, the leaseholds uh, back in 2008, 9, and 10, um, they far outpaced the infrastructure that you just hit on. Okay. And the infrastructure is key, especially with this product being predominantly natural gas. We need the pipelines to move that product. We okay. need compressor stations to compress the product and get it to the plants. And that stuff was not ready yet. Okay. And so folks were drilling in 11, 12, 13, and our infrastructure wasn't quite there yet. So we've got this glut of natural gas or it was being burned off. Wow. And now it's finally starting to catch up. Yeah. And, and that's why I hit on that pipeline easement part in that first pillar of income taxes because pipelines are in my opinion still in their infancy stage there's going to be a lot a lot more pipelines built potentially these formations are producing a ton of natural gas okay okay now when, when you talk about then the fourth pillar the royalty audit mm-hmm. i mean is that something do we do that is that outsourced to other experts how does that how does that work exactly you know yeah ray and associates does that we we do it in two different buckets uh, royalty monitoring or a full-fledged royalty audit Royalty monitoring, we really just do from our desks, and, and we take a look at, at, the, at the volumes that are being produced by said wells, um, and we compare that to what's being reported to the government entity, either the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, uh, Pennsylvania Natural Resources, or West Virginia, okay. and we compare those volumes. We take a look at the decimal interest that determines how the uh, landowner is paid, and um, we make sure that that's correct. Okay. Um, Do you see a lot of inconsistencies with this stuff? I mean, is there? Yeah, you know, there are. Um, a lot of it has to do with chain of title, you know, mm-hmm. not being correct out of the chute. Um, a lot of it can be simple arithmetic. Um, okay. The decimal interest uh, for a landowner goes eight places after the decimal point. Really? So wow. it's. Uh, it's interesting. And then from there, we move to price. You know, is the price per MCF of natural gas or the price per barrel of oil, is that comparable to market? Okay. Um, and if we see glaring issues through our royalty monitoring from our desk, um, we recommend to the landowner that they move forward with a royalty audit. And that's where we kind of get under the hood and we take a look at the records okay. of the oil and gas company um, because, you know, they're, they're like any other business. They're getting paid and then they're paying somebody else to move Sure. the product uh, to the sales point. Royalty auditing makes sure that the landowner is being paid properly. And the landowner has the right to get, get access to the, that, that information. Yes, some leases spell that out, some do not. 
Um, Ray and Associates, we always prefer to engage with an oil and gas attorney, and then the oil and gas attorney engages with the landowner. That provides client attorney privilege with mm -hmm. us and the attorney. And also, when we get under the hood, it allows, we, we can't interpret contracts as CPAs, so it allows us to be engaged by the attorney already, and we can just involve them directly to interpret some contracts, either, either sales contracts or expense contracts or the lease altogether. Wow. It pays to have the right expertise, obviously. I mean, a lot more complexity behind it than, than I would have certainly thought up front. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Um, it, it's, it's highly specialized. Ray and Associates has invested a lot of time and energy into this, and we've developed this four pillars approach, and um, we think it serves the landowner to the best of our abilities. All right, that's great. So if I think about the four pillars, where is there is there one spot where you see sort of more neglect or, or, or that, that gets ignored or, or sort of less emphasis that, uh, than it should, or, or is that? I think it's the third pillar, transfer of wealth. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of gifting done to children yet. Um, I'm seeing that the parents who have worked hard over their lifetime to pay for that farmland that they bought, you know, way back when, you know, they're, they're wanting to to enjoy the fruits of their labor uh, based on the royalties from those mineral rights. Um, there's not a there's not a whole lot of gifting to children while they're living, but but there is some. But if I had to identify a pillar where I'm spending the least amount of time, it would be the transfer of wealth. As we grow older and, and folks pass away, um, there'll be a lot of time needing to be spent in that pillar. Sure. But right now, fortunately, we're not having to spend a lot of time yeah. in that pillar. Especially, as you said, it just made me think when you there's 30 years or whatever of, of reserves there. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of forward thinking and planning that has to go in place. It's not like this is a one or two year deal and then forget it. You've had a great, you've made a great point there. Um, you know, a lot of people ask those questions when we meet and I can't predict the future. Um, you know, I, I work close with a, with a close petroleum engineer friend and, and they do, they do studies, but again, they can't fully predict the future either. Right. But what you can go by is look at the investment these companies are making in our area. Yeah. They're not just making this overnight investment and then going to pull out in two years. Right. They've done their homework. They're going to continue to improve technology and they're going to be here for a while. Yeah. And so we noticed at Ray and Associates that we need to be prepared for this and we need to help these folks. Um, you know, we have a Barnesville satellite office, Barnesville, Ohio, that allows us to be closer to this play. Um, it's, it's just, it's been very rewarding. Um, and I think all of our clients uh, have enjoyed working with us on these pillars. I think that's a, a great way and a, a simple way uh, for people to understand it. You know, from from a construction perspective, that's always my you know my thought process. Like, oh, I can understand what what a pillar means. And if I've got one that's not in place or that's weak, then you know, look out, my house Absolutely. of cards is uh, coming down. So. Absolutely. Speaking of pillars, and we, we started off with with the Browns. What's your what's your outlook this year? You know, you you all in on on Baker and the boys? Ten and six, and and they get in the playoffs. All right, win, win the North and get in the playoffs. Maybe nice. not a bye, but I think they get in there. I like it. They've got got a lot of talent, so uh, we'll hope hope to see that they can uh, they can make it happen. This Hopefully, year. they can control all those egos. So we'll yeah, see. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That's I guess that's a, a good problem for them to have for once, right? Absolutely. Well, thanks, Scott. Appreciate Thank you. you being here. Thanks a lot. And if you want to learn more about the Four Pillars strategy for landowners or to hear previous episodes of Unsuitable, visit our podcast page at www.reacpa.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening to this week's show. You can subscribe to Unsuitable on iTunes or wherever you like to get your podcast, including YouTube. And while you're there, please leave us a review. I'm Doug Hauser. Join us next week for another Unsuitable Interview from an Industry Professional.